Hi dear students, in this special series on subject wise strategy, we are going to identify all the important topics that you must keep in mind before you start working on a subject. We will be looking at the trend for each subject and then mapping it to all the tasks in the app so that you can prepare better and score better. In this video, we are going to discuss the strategy for microbiology. Now, micro in itself is parallelly important for a lot of other subjects. For example, periodontal microbiology, then you have medicine, infections in medicine and surgery, then you have oral path and microbiology. So you have all your infections covered uh, there as well. So when you are preparing for microbiology, make sure that you are also well versed with the other topics in the other subjects. But more or less the trend has been very uh, constant in the past few years. Seven questions are expected on an average and there has been a range of like eight to ten questions every year. Now microbiology is a very easy subject to score because there is very limited things to learn from each specific type of microorganisms. So it's, it's a plus scoring subject and you should really put in all you have for this subject. But in order to understand which topics are important and what kind of questions are repeatedly asked, we'll do a small exercise. So towards the right, we have questions from previous year uh, need papers and on the left, we have the topics. So one by one, we'll assign these questions to their individual topics and then see which topics are more important. So pay attention to the question, look at the kind of questions and you'll also know what kind of topics to expect. So the first question is about Candida, true yeast. No, this is about Cryptococcus neoformans. So that's from mycology, right? Then second question on enteric fever and investigation that needs to be done for that. So this is bacteriology. Now, most of uh, gram positive bacteria are classified in part one bacteriology and the gram negative and mycobacteria are in part two. So when we are assigning, just keep that in mind. 43 year old male with female with necrosed limb. So this is Clostridium perfringens, again bacteriology. Then cross infection is related to sterilization. Sterilization in micro again corresponds to any surgical field. So oral surgery and perio will also have questions on sterilization. Public health will have questions on sterilization, right? Then cross infection in hospital, done. IgE mediated histamine release is an example of atopy. So this is immunology. Viral symmetry features, this is from virology. Then a patient with streptococcus pyogens, what are the virulence factors, bacteriology. Then next is pharyngitis and painless rash with a patient and this is streptolysin. So streptococcus is bacteriology. Drug driver with oropharyngeal candidiasis and the patient is likely to have HIV infection, so that's virology. Then transfer of genetic information through sex pili, general characteristics of bacteria, this is conjugation. Bloody diarrhea is associated with Vibrio cholerae, bacteriology. Dimorphic fungi, so that's myco. Lactose formatting shigella, bacteria. Then typhoid patches, as you can see, intestinal ulcers, that's bacteria. Superantigen is associated with staph. Stain for diphtheria in pharyngeal swab is Albert stain. Patient acquired community pneumonia, that's Legionella, bacteriology. Which of the following is most preferred method to sterilize heat sensitive instruments? Plasma sterilization. As you can see, there is explanation to each of these questions. So feel free to read the explanations, take down all the important notes from the explanation, read the key concept. Watch the video explanation for that multiple choice question. So in this video explanation, you will also see how to tackle similar questions, how to eliminate options and come up with a lot of new information on similar topics. Then gas gangrene is caused by Clostridium, that's bacteria. Which of the following is the most common atypical mycobacterium that involves HIV? Right, so that's bacteria. 
Staphylococcus aureus and which type of agglutination? So that's bacteria. Patient with double vision and dry mouth associated with botulism. So Clostridium bacteria. Pregnant lady comes to the hospital in her first trimester and raised antibodies. Immunology. Identify the specific test that can be used for S aureus. Latex test. So all these tests specific to Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, they are very common. Okay, so they are more popular. They are something that you should definitely focus on. Then fever and tonsillar infection since few days with hyperkeratotic lesion. Uh, the pathological action of toxin used in the mechanism is translation. So you can see the explanation. This is associated with diphtheria. Go through the key concept. Then a pet dog and cystic lesions in lungs. So this is parasitology, hydrated cyst. Neonatal meningitis is associated with streptococcus. Then these are worms, parasitology, hookworms. Then this is an agar plate and we have to identify the microorganism. This is cornibacterium diphtheri. This is LX gel precipitation test. Which of the following is true about strep pneumonia and it is gram positive diplococci interferon gamma is used for diagnosis of tb so that's bacteria again new method of sterilizing heat sensitive equipments plasma sterilization goes to sterilization concentration of alcohol is against sterilization opsonization first question for complement pathway which of the following is not a role of immunoglobulin G? So that's immunology, type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, hepatitis B, immunized doctor gets a needle stick injury. What should be done? So that's virology, right? Needle stick injury that can also come in uh, emergencies in medicine and in surgery. J chain is seen in which immunoglobulin? So that's immunology. Which of the following is not used as a disinfectant? That's sterilization. Steam sterilization, very important. Correct order of bacterial growth phases. So that's general bacteriology. True regarding malaria, parasitology. Method of sterilization of fiber optic laryngoscope, glutaraldehyde sterilization. Not used on skin due to irritation, hypochlorite against sterilization. True about antibodies, IgM is an acute phase reactant that is immunology. Then lowest concentration of HIV is found in saliva, very commonly asked question. In poorly controlled diabetes, most common infection is mucormycosis, again important even with regards to COVID-19 that's important. Fungus affecting the RE system is histoplasmosis and penicillin induced hypersensitivity is an example of type B hypersensitivity reaction. So that brings us to a conclusion of uh, our exercise and as you can see that bacteriology has nearly 19 questions out of a total 49, right? So that's a huge number. It's like one third of your microbiology questions will be from bacteriology and your main focus should be on these questions followed by sterilization and myco and parasito and lesser towards culture, media and complement pathway. But that doesn't mean that they are not important. So you must focus on all of these topics, but more so on bacteriology and sterilization. Now with this information, how do you apply it in the Meritors app? So when you go to the task modules in your app, you will find these tasks identical to the topics that we have just seen. So each topic corresponds to a task. So for example, if you want to prepare hypersensitivity, you will click on prepare and then you can look at the bytes and workbook. So suppose if you open the workbook, you will have a video explanation to the workbook. You can watch the video as many times you like. And then you can go through the illustrations, the flowcharts, the tables, all the data that's given underneath, right? So this is all you need to prepare. And then you can move on to the next hypersensitivity type 2. And then once you finish the entire topic here, 
then you will take the test. You can either prepare questions or you can take test. Now this you must do for all the tasks. And when you complete tasks, you move on to Q bank and then you move on to the test and marathon and national mocks, right? That's the sequence that you must follow. So likewise, you will prepare all the other tasks and then practice questions for all tasks and then move on to the Q bank. And now I will tell you how to maximize your preparation with Meritors app. Now there are five things to keep in mind when you start your preparation for any subject at any given point of time. Number one is to start with tasks. Like I said, tasks are the building blocks. They are your foundation and fundamental for any subject. You need to start preparing for the task with the workbook. You, you must look at the video if you have any doubts regarding the topic and then practice questions and then you can take the test. Now, whenever you are taking a test or practicing questions, each question comes with the answer, explanation and key concept. The explanation will be elaborate. It will tell you everything that you need to know about the topic. It is a good source of taking down notes because a lot of additional questions can be asked from the existing explanations, right? And if you are well versed with the topic, you can just look at the key concept and reinforce the topic in your mind. Additionally, a lot of questions also come with multiple choice question videos, which are explanatory videos. They are going to talk about how to eliminate options, how to strategically focus on the question and additional knowledge that comes with the topic. So your first aim should be to complete all these tasks for a given subject and then move on to the next thing that is QBank. Now QBank or question bank is a collection of high yield extensive questions. They are clubbed together in uh, topics, they are clubbed together chapter wise and you will have more hands on experience on difficult and extensive preparation on these questions. Again, they will come with explanatory videos, explanations and key concepts. So once your tasks and QBank for a given subject are complete, you are good to appear for the weekly checkpoint tests. Now the tests are of two types in the app. One is the weekly checkpoint test and self paced test. I'll tell you about the weekly checkpoint test first. So suppose if you are preparing one subject over the week, then at the end of the week, you will have a test which is going to focus on that specific subject plus the subjects that were previously prepared, right? So that kind of snowballs the entire revision strategy. You will have a repeated encounter of multiple subjects from time to time. So you do not forget. It's easier to keep these topics in mind when you constantly see them. So the revision is reinforced. Plus you also get personalized AI recommendations, right? So at the end of your test, based on your performance, you will get how many questions you answered, what was the score, how much was the negative marking, where are you lacking, what are your stronger points? And then it will tell you how much time to dedicate for a revision of your weaker subjects. So with this strategy, you will be able to focus on specific areas that are your weaknesses. Now that is an exceptional feature of Meritor's app. And the next set of tests is self paced test, which you can take at any given point of time. These are subject wise tests. You can also have cumulative tests, multiple recall questions also incorporated in form of tests. And towards the end of your preparation phase, you will have a lot of volatile, factual high yield questions uh, in form of final strokes, which are again specialized tests to be able to remember these topics clearly before the exam. Now, once you come closer towards the end of your preparation, you will have access to this special feature of the app called Marathon. This is activated towards the end of your preparation where you will have 3500 plus high yield questions. High yield questions meaning they have the chances to uh, be seen in the exam because either they are based on recall questions or because they are based on important concepts that are repeatedly seen in the exam. So when you practice these 3500 plus questions, you will also enter an all India competition where you will get a fair idea as to how your performance is with comparison to your colleagues. It's a great boost of confidence if you take it at the right time. And lastly, we have the all famous national mocks, which is a pan India or all India nationwide uh, simulation of NEET MDS exam. We conduct them uh, towards the end of your preparation in a few months to go. And every weekend you will have access to this special test. You will see a lot of new questions in national mocks, uh, which are based on important topics. 
so do not miss national mocks because it gives you a good hands on experience of the exam it gives you an idea of time management because this is exactly according to neat pattern that is 240 questions and 3 hours with negative marking so you you kind of get a very fair and square idea of your performance because this is again an all india competitive uh, mock exam and you will get personalized ai recommendations here as well now they are more important for uh, national mocks too because uh, towards the end when you are revising you will not know which subject to pick up at what time and your performance in the national mock will be assessed thoroughly and you will get your ai recommendations which will tell you which subjects to revise so make sure that you are making use of all of these features in the app now apart from that if there is any query that you have while solving your questions if you have any doubts regarding any topics you can always contact the faculty on the whatsapp group we are always here to help you and i hope with this in mind you will be able to channelize all your preparation strategy in the right direction and i hope we'll be able to help you achieve your dream seat in mds thank you so much and good luck from team meritors